Welcome back, everyone's the Bourbon Judge. It is Sample Sunday, and I am ready to have some fun with three different brands. So um, I'm diving into three different brands, and I want to just kind of give an overview about the brands, where they're located, just some history, kind of keep it high level. I'm not diving into like the mash bills and the availability and the price points and all that nonsense, just about the brands and these samples that I got from my patrons, by the way, and thank you for my patrons, um, just to see whether or not is the whiskey good. So just flat out the brands, a little bit of an overview about the brands and whether or not the whiskey is good or not. So these are three different brands I've always wanted to try myself, uh, or at least this version of it, I should say, and um, haven't been able to find them. But luckily, my patrons, who are super cool, sent me some samples. So I'm like, you know, let me go ahead and get them on the channel. So. Again, I want to give credit to a lot of my patrons who always send me samples. My buddy uh, Chris H, Terrence, uh, Tom, um, and in this case, Chris Bruno, and my buddy Dennis Z out of Ohio. So uh, thank you, gentlemen, as well as the ladies as well who sent me samples before as well. Thank you so much for always sharing the whiskey with me. All right. We're going to try to keep this one high level because we have three to do. That's a lot of whiskey. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start off with uh, this one here. And by the way, I've already poured at least these two. I didn't pour this one, oddly enough, in my Infinity bottle, but I did for these two. But we're going to start off with the first one, which is Milan and Green. So Milan and Green. So Milan and Green is actually based out of Texas. Now, what's interesting about them is that they're based out of Texas. Their distillery is based out of Texas, but they actually distill not only in Texas, they also distill in Barstown, Kentucky. So I think they're doing contract distilling at Barstown Bourbon Company um, out of uh, Kentucky. But their actual distillery itself, their brand new distillery, it is actually based in Texas. Now, what I will say is what's unique about them is two things. Number one, female owned. So it's owned by two different females. And the master distiller, her name is Marlene Holmes. So Marlene Holmes, she actually worked before Malam and Green. She worked for Jim Beam and actually for Booker No for 30 years. So I think she knows a thing or two about whiskey. She also worked with uh, one of my other favorite brands. Well, th this individual, I should say, Pam Heilman, the former master distiller from Michter's. So obviously Marlene as the master distiller at Malam and Green, she knows her whiskey, right? She definitely knows her whiskey. What I will say about the second thing about Malam and Green is that when you think about them, you hear they're based out of, out of Texas, you're probably thinking, oh, it's probably just like Garrison's brother. Folks, I'm telling you, I've their whiskey is not like Garrison's brothers because they actually age in various rickhouses across four different states and then they blend it all together. So it's not going to taste just like a Garrison's brother. So don't put it in that Texas whiskey, very deep, rich, kind of knock you out kind of a whiskey. It's, it's completely different. That I do know for sure. So that's one thing. All right, let's get into this nose real quick. So Milan and Green, out of Texas, but again, they distill as well over in Kentucky, and they age your whiskey across four different states, and they kind of blend it together. Now, what I'm sampling today is a single barrel. So because they're a newer, let's call it brand newer distillery, a lot of their single barrels are actually is actually source whiskey that they're getting from various different places, you know, across the U.S. So this is a single barrel again coming from uh, Malam and Green, coming in at 124.14 proof. So thanks again, Dennis, for the sample, my friend. Really appreciate it. Mm. Nice nose, a little fruity, slight vanilla, slight caramel, but nice. All right. Cheers, everybody. Oh yeah. Oh wow. That's delicious. When you see Milan and Green, small little bottles, and I'll fly it in so you guys can see it. Small little bottles. I've always wondered, how are their single barrels? Well, I don't know the age on this. All I know is the proof that 124, but I will tell you, everything from the nose, the fruit notes, the caramel, all that came through the palate, the finish, Wow, that is good. <laughs> the finish, nice, long, and solid. So they have a lot of different products. If you look them up online, Milan and Green. However, I will say, at least for this single barrel, for me, obviously, again, the master distiller, even though she didn't make this one herself, more than likely, I will say she obviously knows whiskey very well because she definitely selected a damn good barrel. That one, Milan and Green, is absolutely a buy. 
Great job, by the way, Marlene. Love it. I mean, gosh, I mean, she worked for Jim Bean for 30 years. She has to know whiskey. <laughs> mm. And I love the fact that it's a female-owned distillery as well. That's really cool. Being a father of a girl, a young lady, I love that. So kudos to Milan and Green. Great job there. And I'm looking forward to trying... A lot of their whiskey themselves is obviously newer because they've been distilling it over the last few years. So I'm really looking forward to trying their own whiskey, but for at least what they're sourcing right now, that was actually really good. All right. Now we're going over to 291 Whiskey or 291 Colorado Whiskey. So this is a barrel proof rye whiskey, also a single barrel, coming in at 128.1 proof. So if you ever look at the 291 Colorado bottle, Again, I'll fly it in. Beautiful branding. I mean, amazing branding, right? Out of Colorado. So the owner, his name is, the owner and master distiller, his name is Michael Myers. Yes, like that Michael Myers. <laughs> I'm not gonna mess with Michael Myers, I will say that. But uh, based out of Colorado, so Michael was an ex-photographer, ex-photographer for many years, very successful, but he grew up in the South near where they, they make a lot of whiskey in various different states like Tennessee and so forth. So he obviously loved whiskey kind of growing up. And his goal was, you know, once he's kind of done with the whole photography thing, to be able to create his own brand. So he wanted to kind of pay homage to like the West, like the old West, where I guess his thought process was like you walk into like an old bar or saloon and you, you say, you know, bartender, I want a whiskey. And someone like the bartender just slams down a bottle like, boom, you know, um, he wanted that to be 291 whiskey. So that was like his his whole thought process. But what's unique about 291 whiskey is that two things. Number one, if you look at their, their website, they have a ton of different bourbon and rye different finishes. I mean, you name it, they make a lot of whiskey, but a, still a small craft distillery. So they're still very small from a craft standpoint, but they make a lot of different variations. The second thing I will say is that about 291 whiskey is the fact that they are sourcing all of their grains from Colorado as well as the Colorado water, right? You think about all the great H2O that's nice and clean and pure out in Colorado Springs. So they're also getting all their H2O as well, of course, from Colorado. So this should be very unique. Again, this one comes from my good friend, Dennis Z. And this is a uh, barrel proof rye, single barrel coming in 128.1. All right. So this distillery opened back, I think he said he pulled his first barrel back off in like 2011. So they've been up and running now for 12 years and I've never actually had this product ever before, like never. So really looking forward to this one. Dennis, I appreciate you, my friend. Thank you, buddy. Cheers, everybody. Oh, wow. Mmm. Woo. Wow, is this a finished whiskey? It's not a finished right? No, it's not. This is very deep and rich. It almost has like, um, I'm so excited. I didn't even noticed it before. <laughs> it almost has like a, um, a note of like a raspberry kind of a note in there, like a raspberry peppery kind of a note. Wow. This is really, really nice. Wow. That's actually. See, what, what I love about this is that craft distillery, not your big time Buffalo Trace Heaven Hill. Folks, there's a lot of great whiskey out there. Obviously, my judgment on this one already, you can tell it's a buy. There's a lot of great whiskey out there from craft distilleries. Do not sleep on them. Oh my goodness. Damn. Dennis, I owe you some samples back. <laughs> I mean, because these two are just amazing. Mmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's almost like a raspberry slash strawberry kind of a note in the background. Mixing with, obviously, it is a rye, of course. So a ton of like pepper, a smidge of mint. This is, damn, what? All right, Dennis, we may need to talk. <laughs> that bottle is fantastic. Goodness. Mm. Wow. That too is getting a buy. Again, I don't know the prices of these, so I'm giving them a buy 
based off of the quality of the whiskey. But if I had to say how much would I pay for them, because that's probably a good thing to add in, I would say for the Milan and Green, that to me is probably like a good 80, $85 bottle. Again, I'm not sure the exact price of this single barrel, but that's like a good $80, $85 bottle. This 291 Colorado Rye, whoo, that's easily a good $100 bottle. Seriously, and I mean that, right? I mean that because... It doesn't, like a lot of times you buy like a $50, $60 bottle, if it's sourced, it's like, it's decent, right? In this case, which there's, theirs is not sourced, they're making their, um, the 291 itself. That is absolutely amazing. From the pal the nose, to the palate, all the way to the finish. That is flat out amazing. So, I know I'm now in the, definitely going to be buying a, a bottle from Alam and Green, and absolutely from 291 Colorado Whiskey, for sure. All right. Folks, before I dive into the last bottle, three quick easy favors. Number one, hit the like button. Number two, drop me a comment. Let me know what are some of your up and coming brands that you're really excited about and or uh, just some craft distilleries that you love, maybe like in your neck of the woods. Let me know some of the brands that maybe I should be on the lookout for as well. Last but not least, please make sure you also subscribe and hit the bell so you get a notification each and every time I release new content. Fair? Cool. All right, number three. Let's go ahead and pour this one. So this comes from my buddy Chris Bruno. This is not too far from him. So this is Catoc I'm sorry, Catoctin Creek. Uh, this is a round stone rye, cast proof, so cat or barrel proof, finished in maple syrup, coming in at 117.6 proof. So what do we know about Catoctin Creek? So number one. It was started and owned still to this day by a husband and wife. Uh, the distillery itself is based out of Virginia. So they're based out of Virginia and it's a husband and wife that run it. They do everything, which I think is awesome. I don't know if Mrs. Judge and I could could run our own uh, whiskey company, to be honest with you. But let, let's let's leave it to uh, the folks over at Catoctin Creek, to that lovely couple. Um, but they're based out of Virginia, husband and wife. The cool thing about them, though, is that they only make rise so there's no whiskey there's no bourbons i should say no bourbons no american whiskeys no single malts they truly only make rye whiskey now i will say they do finishes so different finishes so this one again is finished in the uh, uh maple syrup uh cash finish i know they also have like a, a honey finish as well so they do like the honey finish kind of like what bell mead uh is doing like new Lou and so forth so they do have that and they have other finishes as well so that's pretty cool all right let's get into this one wow for a maple syrup finish on a rye whiskey the nose itself is not as sweet as i thought it would be to be honest with you it's not so the nose has a lot more pepper and mint, more like the rye notes of the whiskey. Maybe they're not leaving it in the maple syrup barrel as long as, as other uh, distilleries are doing. But the nose is definitely a lot more peppery, a lot more minty. And you definitely do get the sugar notes like from that, that maple syrup. You do get the sugar notes like the, the brown sugar, a smidge of like some... Um, even like some leather as well. The nose is really nice. I will say that. All right. The Tocton Creek out of Virginia. Husband and wife. I love it. Potentially doing some good things. We shall see. Cheers to each and every one of you. Mm. Hold on. Let me get a little bit more of that. That was interesting. That's not as sweet as I thought. I mean, it's, it's not. Wow, this is sweet. Let's make sure. Yeah, this is the finished in maple syrup barrels. All right. I know Chris always talks about this one. Just want to make sure. Wow. Wow. That is actually really nice. There are a couple things that come to mind. Number one. I've had bourbon before finished in maple syrup uh, barrels, ex maple syrup barrels. And to me, that's just too much sweetness of the traditional bourbon notes uh, layered in with the uh, maple syrup. 
but for a rye whiskey, which we all know rye is typically a little bit spicier, a little bit more pepper, more mint for it, because of the rye notes and how uh, spicy it is, the maple syrup, it cuts it nice and just across the board. I don't know the exact price off of this. I think it's probably like a good $75 bottle. If you want a rye that is a good even blend of being, let's call it, you know, spicy, minty, peppery, with just a nice little edge of sweetness to it, please try Catoctin rye, uh, Catoctin uh, rye finished in maple syrup barrels. It's not overly sweet at all. And this, oh my gosh, three reviews. You guys know me, I'm always gonna be straight up with you, right? At, at, at the price points I mentioned, I don't know what they are exactly, but at the price points I mentioned, that 70, if it was $75 for this bottle here, man, sign me up all day. That is delicious. I'm actually gonna pour some more of this right now. Woo, Chris, I owe you another one. Thank you again, my friend. Hey folks, until the next time, you guys know me, you know the way I rock and roll. Peace, cheers, and most important, salute. Take care, everyone.